Hello everyone. My name is Santosh Acharji, but people call me Sandy Acharji. That's okay with me. I was born and raised in India in a Hindu family where my father and mother were very conservative Hindus. So all I knew was Hinduism from my childhood until when I I'm now in the US, Cleveland, Ohio. And one night I had a severe chest pain and that actually took me to the ICU of the hospital where everyone thought I was having a heart attack but ended out ended out not to be a heart attack but some gallstones ruptured and when they ruptured they attacked the nearby organ called pancreas and they went from one end to the other end as a result my pancreas was bleeding and to make a long story short my doctor said there's nothing they can do for me there's no such medication or procedure for me to be saved all mm-hmm. he said all he said to me you can pray and hope and hope that your heart rate will come down then they can do something so that how everything started and that in the hospital things started to get complicated further and further until one day i collapsed i had a code blue in that hospital and i died from in that hospital mm-hmm. physically died and i was gone for 3 days and 3 nights and then in the meantime I had no recollection of what happened to me but I still remember every second of what happened outside this world because all along I thought that once I die that's it your life is finished but then when I died I realized my life did not finish there is another life after that and that's what I want to share with you well i was at the time i was at the icu of this hospital and at the moment my wife was with me my son came to visit with me my daughter in law was there they used to live in north of detroit at the time and my granddaughter was there so i gave my final blessings to them and then i collapsed on that bed mm So when I collapsed in the bed all my senses were gone immediately I could not see my my wife and my family I could not speak to them they all disappeared and then but the only thing was there still there was my hearing I could still hear for s- several minutes what's going on in this room so that tells me the hearing would be the last thing that we lose when you die in this in this world okay. that's what i think and then through the hearing i could see a lot of footsteps in the room before that i could hear one of the you know registered nurses calling on the intercom code blue code blue code blue room number such and such i did not know what the code blue meant at the time then i could hear a lot of footsteps in the room and they actually drove everybody out including my family and they took over and by hearing what they're saying i think they were trying to revive me but they could not because the last thing very last thing that i remember is one doctor telling the other doctor we are rapidly losing him he is not responding at all and the other doctor said we just lost him and that's the final thing i remember from this world until i came back mm. i came back after 3 days and 3 nights and what they did to me i did not know i only heard from my doctors later on what happened mm. so mm. what did what they did to me is they could not revive me so they said they 
induced coma in me. I don't know what that meant. And they took me to the to the surgery room. Oh, they put me on the ventilator first. They took me to the surgery room because one of the reasons I had code blue, my lungs got filled up with blood. There was this little malfunction of no, not intentionally. But the medical people did something wrong, I think. As a result, my lungs got filled up with blood when it fully you know, immersed with blood, I could not take any more breath. And that's how I died. At that moment, I felt that everything is dead, dark. I couldn't see anything for it. I don't know how long it was. Everything. But then I, all of a sudden I realized my physical death did not finish me. I'm still alive. Only thing, my body is not there, but everything my body could do, I could still do. I could still think, I could still analyze, I could I could do everything my body did, but my, my physical body was not there. So that really brought this question that my life was not over with my physical death. There is another life after that. At that moment, when I was thinking, I saw a bright light appeared before me. And that light was so bright. And when it was coming near me, I knew that light has superior authority. I have to obey that light. Nobody had to tell me. And then when the light came near me, I could see my dead body on the hospital bed. That I just came out. The light took over me. It's like more or less like engulfed me with its radiance. And the light was so bright, I could not see anything. Everything else disappeared except the light that was in front of me. The light took me. I call this light a divine light because it was taking me someplace. But wherever it's taking me, I knew it meant good for me. So during the transition, I fell in love with the divine light okay? because his, its purpose was to protect me from any harm or any wrongdoing. Together we traveled for quite some time. And during this transition, all I could feel once in a while that we we're going to some dark tunnels. And then at the end of the journey, the light stopped. When the light stopped, I had to stop. Then, when I look in front of me, I saw the light was actually shining on top of a huge compound. That compound was so beautiful, marvelous. And I could see everything even better than what I can see normally in this in this world because once we are out there our vision is unlimited what i mean by that i could see from one end to the other end without any obstruction in between i could see everything what's going on on the other side and i could also zoom in like a powerful camera can do but in this life we cannot do that okay? and then once the light stopped on that beautiful compound. And as soon as I saw that compound, I see there's many, many mansions in that beautiful. It's all surrounded by high walls. Okay. And then I counted there were 12 gates all around. And that none of the gates were open were open for me. I desperately wanted to go inside but I could not go inside. I was just outside of the outside of the gate. And then I also saw many, many angels there, many. And those angels, they were actually, their mission is to protect the territory of this beautiful compound. 
And when I saw the angels, then I realized I'm looking at the kingdom of heaven. And I desperately wanted to get inside. But I could not get inside because none of the gates were open for me. And I was very sad. And I was standing on a huge platform. That platform would be about a thousand feet long, would be about 250 feet wide. And I was on the extreme left end of this platform. My immediate think, immediate reaction was, it seems like on a very high ground, how come this platform doesn't have any railing? What if, if I fall down, where am I going to fall? So I looked on my left and I looked down below where I would fall would be enormous depth and that was deep dungeon dark world there was no light there and the place that I would fall was a burning lake of fire that's where I was going to fall from that platform and that made me very sad because I desperately wanted to go in front into that compound but I can't because I'll Gates are closed. Only option I have is to is to dive down on my left into the deep dungeon dark world. And that's those that wall down there is all abyss. You know what I mean by abyss? Once I fall down, I cannot climb up. That will be the end of it. And I was there. I want to go forward, but I can't. I cannot go back where I came from because I said, no, no. Once we leave this world, we got a one-way ticket with no return. Only option I have is to fall on my left. At that moment, I was very sad and I sincerely wished I had an alternative. At that moment, I was looking on that platform. I looked towards the center of the platform, like I mentioned, 2,000 feet long. 200 right around the center of it i see there is a three steps like a like an altar and on the third step i saw there is a huge throne and that on that throne it looks like somebody was sitting there so when i looked up lo and behold that's where i saw the lord almighty lord jesus christ at the time i did not know that he was Lord Jesus Christ. But I knew he was the Almighty. Nobody needed to introduce him to me. Because I knew. I knew he was the Lord of everything. He was Lord of all. And then when I, I looked at his face only once. But I could not look at him second time. Because shame and guilt took over me. Because up until then I committed so many sins. And every sin that I committed was flushed before my eyes. And I was looking down below. I could not look at his face. I was looking at his feet. And I kept repeating the same thing over and over. Lord, please forgive me. Please forgive me. I committed so many wrongdoings in my life. Please forgive me. I was begging for his mercy. I was looking at his feet and I was shaking. Because I knew that would be the last day of my life. I had no other choice but to dive into that lake of fire. I kept repeating the same thing, Lord, please forgive me. I knew that at any moment I was going to dive. Then the Lord spoke to me. When he spoke to me, he had a deep authoritative, authoritative voice. But when he spoke to me, he spoke with so love and compassion. I was thinking of the worst. But when he spoke to me, I could understand through any of the languages that I know. And when I spoke back, he even understood even before I said anything. When the Lord spoke to me first, he said, What are you doing here? I shrugged my shoulder, meaning I don't know. He said, I'm sending you back to the earth. But when you're back, I want you 
to love your family and love your children. When the Lord spoke to me, I had little courage because I was afraid. I was thinking of the worst, but when he spoke to me, I could hear the tenderness and the compassion and the mercy in his voice. And then when I was looking at him, at his feet, right around on his left side, I saw there was a very narrow door, like a narrow gate. And that was the only gate that was open. All the gates are closed. So that's the only gate that we can go through, is that narrow gate. And I, through that narrow gate, I could see the entire kingdom of heaven through. But I could not dare because the Lord was a giant. When he appeared to me, he was a giant. And I am this world, I'm only five feet, six inches tall. And the giant is in front of me. How can I go through the door? I, I felt like running through the door, but I could not dare. I can only go through the door only if he lets me in. Otherwise, it's, it's, it's impossible. So. When the Lord spoke to me, sending me back to the earth, I thought that is going to happen any moment. So I got some courage. I asked the Lord, I said, Lord, please tell me when I go back, please tell me which church I need to join, which temple, which mosque, which synagogue, or any other place, because that's all I knew. Okay. Which, where do you want me to go? The Lord did not respond. And then I kept pleading. I said, Lord, please tell me where I should join. Because when I go back, I'm going to be committing the same things over and over. But next time when you see me, I want to go through this narrow door here. Finally, after repeated pleadings, he responded. He said, I was asking for church and temple and mosque and synagogue or any other religious places. He said to me, those things are not important to me. I was shocked. Was all along, I thought you have to be in a, a religious person to enter into the kingdom of heaven. But he said, no, I want to see. I want an honest relationship. I want to see how true, how sincere, how honest you were with me. Not just once a week every day 365 days a year how honest are you that's the relationship i'm looking i seriously did not understand what he meant to me and then i said lord i'm a simple human being please tell me what i need to do so when you see me next time i can walk through this door and then he gave me some instructions please give me some instruction he gave me he gave me one directive, like one directive and five instructions. First directive was love your family and love your children. That's mandatory. You must love your family and love your children. And the first instruction is always tell the truth. Now, always tell the truth has two meanings for me. First is don't lie. Secondly, is tell the truth like what's happening here, like what you are witnessing in front, what you're witnessing on your left. Share the truth. Share the truth with anyone. Okay. So I got the first instruction. And the second instruction was the wages of sin is death. From this day on forward, commit no more sins. I got that. Third instruction, he said, surrender yourself completely. I should underline the complete unto me in your daily life. Let me be the driver in your life. And then fourth instruction was walk with me. I did not understand what that meant because I came from a different background. Walk with me, the way I understand is walk in the same direction where the Lord wants to go. We 
can have money and all kinds of other things, they are not going to give us internal peace. Internal peace and happiness and joy will only come by surrendering to Lord and knowing Him one on one. Surrendering to His mercy, to His grace, to His direction, to His guidance. But in this world, we like to do everything on our own and that's why you get in trouble. Mm. Don't ask for His guidance, His direction, which direction I should go, what I should do. If we want to do that, He is there to help us all the time. I was so afraid, so scared that where I stood right at the edge of the platform, I immediately went two steps on my right so I don't fall down. It was so scary and we need to stay away from that place because that means our permanent death. I knew if I dived in there, it would be my permanent death. Mm. There would be no, no temporary death. Like you said, the heaven is a pure, pure place. There's no room for any impurity there. No room. Mm. So even if he committed one sin by telling lies, how are you going to get rid of that? You can't get rid of it. Yes. Only way you can get rid of it by nailing it on the cross where Jesus took that sin away from.